There's a lot of cringy shit in here. My mom has found a leash, so she picked up the leash and the collar that said Daddy's Girl. I am a cancer. Go, 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 go. Video. <sighs> my head hurts. Why does my mouth taste like peeny weeny? And why do I know what peeny weeny tastes like? No! Welcome to part two. There's some memes going around from the first video, some of which Shoe Shives here is trying to take back. And it's almost as bad as when she tried to take the word cuck back by changing her name to cuck due to my video. You know, this behavior kind of reminds me of something. I saw some feedback about the video and it was mostly positive and a little bit negative, mostly from Shoe's Uwu Waifu White Knights. Some of which were saying that I was a jealous stalker it's funny how her cult calls me a stalker, and that's right, a cult, because they try to follow and emulate her. You're all stalkers, and you are the reason they left in the first place. Because you're creepy. Screen cap, screen cap, I know where she lives, she's this year's old. What are you doing? Like, and then there's some of you who just like, oh my god, you take stalking to a whole nother level, a whole nother level. Like. But most of this information is readily available in Encyclopedia Dramatica. You know, I even made fun of the fact that they were going to say that I was jealous in the first video, but I guess they just completely disregarded that. My favorite rebuttal has got to be when they say that I go in on their private sex life, even though it's blasted and thrown in your face all across their social media. The last major thing I saw as far as feedback was that I was using clips that were outdated and old and that she had changed. Which is why I'm making this video to go further into it and show you guys why she didn't change. The things I showed you guys in the last video are very relevant to my points and I'm going to show why in this video. So to start off with, Shu actually has a long history of lying and inconsistencies, and I pointed that out in the last video. But let it be noted that she herself has admitted to lying. With this text here, she's basically saying, I was a pathological liar, but I'm not anymore, I swear. She will address the video of her saying that she bullied a girl called Scarf Girl, but she said the part where she popped a balloon in a girl's face was fake, but the bullying part was real. I used the clip to demonstrate how she isn't a shy wallflower like she said she was and is. So her saying, oh, the part where I popped a balloon in the girl's face is false, but I still did bully her, it doesn't really take away from my point. In fact, I think it added to my point because she admitted to lying, and I have evidence in this video to show that she hasn't really changed either. So in the video that we're talking about here, she sends an apology to Scarf Girl, saying that she was sorry for bullying her as she had explained earlier in the video. So I felt really bad a couple of months ago about that girl and her scarf. So I sent her a message on Facebook, a really, really long message, like, so heartfelt, like, from my heart, saying, I was an idiot, I'm sorry if I caused you any emotional trauma, you're probably a, you're a great person, you have a great personality, blah de blah bullshit and all she said back was K. Just like, fuck! And then you take a look at the live stream that Shu herself linked to say, hey, I'm not hiding the fact I'm a bully. And then she starts making fun of the girl that she was oh so sorry for bullying all over again. She was a wee boo. <laughs> she loved anime. And she wore a Harry Potter scarf and sometimes a tail. And yeah, so it was like, I would make fun of her Harry Potter scarf and like, she would draw me with a Hitler mustache and like, stab the head. Like, yeah. What we did to her was not as bad as like her psycho shit, but... I think it was just like, we didn't like bully anybody, but we no. did make fun of 
every like, like behind it was closed just doors. Everything and everyone. It wasn't like consistent picking. It was just you like mean- all day, every day. Like everything was funny. And she always used to wear a Harry Potter scarf, because I guess she liked Harry Potter too. Me and my other friend would call her Scarf, and we would be like, Scarf girl, Scarf, Scarf! And we even brought in a guitar one day, and we had a song for her, and... Then one day, she just couldn't take it anymore, and she came in without the scarf. Where's your scarf? Where's your scarf, Scarf girl? Oh my god. I go into her backpack right in front of her face, grab the scarf, and like, fling it around the room like, Scarf Girl's got her scarf! And she got so upset. This isn't a 10 year old stream, this is a recent stream that she did some months ago. So for someone to look at that and say she's changed as a person is almost as dishonest as she is. And you'll notice this common theme where she apologizes for something but then repeats the behavior. Another time of when Shu was dishonest was when she said on Twitter that her boyfriend having sex with other women in front of her was just fan fiction. He ate vanilla and it just wasn't quite a fit and now you're happy in your BDSM relationship. Um, so do you guys, is that monogamous like sexually, romantically, financially or is that like monogamous but we also play with other people? Monogamous and we play with other people. Um, we're okay with um, female, female, male like threesomes. You can't really say, oh, my boyfriend doesn't have sex with other women in front of me when you're saying that you're open to threesomes, that you partake in threesomes with your boyfriend, with another woman. Not to mention what I had already talked about in the first video with her boyfriend, Pregory, flirting with porn stars and e-girls on Twitter constantly. And for her to deny that she's a cuck in front of her fans saying that it's fan fiction, it's very misleading. Next up on the list of lies is the candid scandal that her and her boyfriend, Pregory, were involved with. Shu was getting paid to tell her fans to download an app called Candid. This app was marketed as a free speech social media, but ended up being a honeypot. Candid was using the app so that their AI could learn how to better censor people. You know how so many videos get demonetized today by having certain words in their title, in their tags, or description? Well, you could say that Shuwu and Pregory had a hand in that. Candid ended up getting dissolved into Uber, and their CEO now works for Amazon, and she couldn't have done it without Shuwu's help. So what did Shuwu do when she heard about Candid being shady? Well, she made a video to her fans lying, saying that she wasn't in contract when in fact she was, and continued to promote the app. I'm not being paid anymore. People are like, oh, you're just defending because you're being paid. No, it was a one-time thing. You're off their contract. It was a one-time thing. You're off their contract. As I touched on a little bit earlier, she will often lies about who she is as a person. Sometimes she claims she was a shy wallflower despite bullying girls in high school. She flashed a parking lot her ass. She had a photo with her legs open while squatting. She has footage of herself grabbing her own tits and ass on a live stream. Call me crazy, but I don't think that shy wallflowers have photos of them flashing their asses to parking lots. And when I am the one talking about how social interaction works, that's how you know things are bad. She lied and said that she was a pure virgin until 22 when responding to her fans. She also lied and said that she was asexual in the same time period of what I'm about to show you. The only thing sexually that I remember her saying was she had never had sex, but that she would um, give a give a blowjob to a boyfriend that she had at the time. A few of them, I guess. I don't know if it was more than one. Either she's lying or she just forgot about all those dicks she sucked. She built almost a million subscriber fan base that supports her financially because they like her personality, but her persona that she projects is based on lies. Like how she throws in your face about how small and cute she is by tweeting about her Barbie dolls and everything else shown in the first video. Even if it means throwing people under the bus, just like that girl with the sword that I showed you guys in the first video that she and her boyfriend had called fat when she was obviously not. Even Shu Wu's own sister isn't safe from her using her as something to make herself feel small. When I was four years old, my sister Sarah was born. She was super fat and probably weighed like 7,000 pounds. I had their first baby, me. I was only six I was only six pounds and super duper teeny and before nothing has changed. She just never misses an opportunity to tell her fan base how small and cute she is. You guys remember that video when Fat Butt McGee walked around Ghetto New York for 10 whole hours and got like three legitimately creepy comments and the rest were just people complimenting her? This 
is done to portray a false image to her audience that she's innocent and young and small. And this enables her to be above criticism and I think she actually explained it better herself. And it's all very misleading on who she is as a person and she changes herself based on public opinion as well. A really good example of Shuwu doing things for people's approval was the whole Lauren Southern situation. She disavowed her friend to try to make people happy, but then when it backlashed and it didn't work, she went and backpedaled and deleted the tweet. She and then she tries to go and be friends with Lauren Southern again to kind of use her as a shield. It's like, see, look, we're friends. You guys don't have to criticize me now. All of this to get people's approval at Lauren's expense, of course. She will even changes who she is for her boyfriend. The one who she thinks is a muscular sex god. You know, the self-proclaimed high IQ man who has a learning disability. He has Shiwu dressed like a child, which is why she has the look how young and small I am shtick that she can't stop throwing in everyone's face because guys, look how uwu I am. Before she met Pregory, she was just your typical Long Island chick that looked like she could be part of the cast of Jersey Shore. And now she tries to dress and act like a kid when she's 27 years old. Pregory just wants to be her daddy. That's why they push the meme of look how I'm so small compared to him so he looks like my dad. Interesting enough, there's this clip where they defend DDLG claiming that it has nothing to do with daddy-daughter. To women who really enjoy the daddy-daughter arrangement, uh, I can fully respect uh, your it's not daddy-daughter, it's, it's not daughter, daddy, it's not daughter. daughter. <laughs> She's showing here that she does not even understand the kink. It, the, it, people who are into the DDLG daddy dom and little girl thing don't literally consider them father daughter it's not a daughter that's fucking disgusting daddy dom little girl arrangement is like the most dominant and most submissive a male and female can be with each other that's what that kink is it, you're not literally considering her your fucking daughter holy shit <laughs> How convenient is it that she's with someone like this and that her views on pedophilia are this slimy, calling pedophilia a side kink and that it's okay to be attracted to anyone you find young and fertile looking. After knowing this, it's kinda creepy knowing that Pregory has a lolly mouse pad. Not only does she buy herself children's toys and dress like a child, but she also does this weird goo goo gaga speak. She kind of speaks like how a baby would where they can't say a word right, and the weirdest part is her fans try to imitate it. And she's not doing this because it's something that comes to her naturally, she's tryharding and doing it for her boyfriend and she's trying to pander to her audience. Even when I interviewed her friend who was actually defending her in a lot of the interview, he himself said that she changes her interests based on who's around her, that she used to hate Star Wars but then when she met a group of friends that liked Star Wars, suddenly she's the biggest fan of Star Wars. Her close friend of two to three years also said that she was apolitical, but then what do you know, suddenly feminism becomes a hot topic and she's suddenly a political commentator, which she won't admit to, she'll just cop out and say it's entertainment. It's like she's not even a real person, kind of like how Ditto is barely its own Pokemon. It doesn't have its own moves, it has to copy another Pokemon. She's the type of girl that'll respond to anything on Twitter with, that's so me. And if you ever skim through her Twitter, you'll notice that even when she replies to other people's tweets, she'll try to make it about herself. It's like a talent. I don't know how she makes everything about herself, but she does. But you know what else is so her? Being an alpha, apparently. She has a song called Alpha Bitch. This beat is automatic. Now I hit the switch. Survival of the fittest. It's pretty ironic considering that she deletes things all the time and has a side hobby of blocking people over things so small that people don't even know why she blocked them in the first place. She's the one who's supposed to be anti-safe space, making fun of Steve Shives, which by the way she apparently hates when you call her shoe Shives, which I think is hilarious. She's the exact opposite of what an alpha is. I think this tweet right here just aged so very poorly. Even with her response to me, she didn't bother to tag me, but then put my name in the blog itself. She does this a lot where she'll indirectly talk about someone or act like she's censoring info. But then she'll leave crucial identifiable information in so that you can still find who she's talking about and annoy them. It's really deceptive to try to pretend you're a good person for censoring people's information when you actually didn't. Oh, I actually censored your name. You can't give me criticism for my whiteness coming after you now. 
especially when you keep doing it, leaving their information in screenshots and retweeting things that have their info on it, even after you say, oh, I stopped doing that. Shushives is very hypocritical as well. In example, she said that PewDiePie saying the bad black word was indefensible because it was so bad. Yet there's multiple instances where she says the quote indefensible word herself. She even hangs around people that shout it. I don't know your ex I said Boom! To a gas station, thank God. We are in the middle of black, black land. No offense, is like black people, but you know they have the we're reputation. Pretty white, I don't they know. Have, yeah, we're, and we're all like we're all like girls. fucking like pretty look ass look at dresses. Look at look at <laughs> like we're all we're like dressed like like hi. We're level. getting raped. Okay, so she basically pulled an H three H three on PewDiePie. She will criticize Findom, which would be fine if she herself wasn't broadcasting her BDSM cringe to the entire internet. She's above Findom because she has no morals and no daddy issues. Meanwhile, she posts about how she worships her boyfriend's dick online with a leash attached to her neck calling him daddy. Here's another example of her hypocrisy. She criticized using a hack helicopter as a joke, but she used it herself less than one month prior. It's pretty funny how she changes so much that she actually ends up criticizing an earlier version of herself. I think it's also hypocritical that Shu said that mental illness is not to be romanticized, but then she went and said, oh look at my quirky ADHD. In fact, it's so quirky that I'm not even going to bother to treat it. How can someone say that their mental illness is just too quirky to bother to even fix? There were Discord leaks of Shulu's server, and I took a look at them, and there's one in particular I'd like to bring up. In this one, she says, kill me if I ever show cleavage on Shu on head. Well, the thing is, she already did that on her Instagram account, Shoe on Head, and on her YouTube channel, Shoe on Head, as well. Cleavage is just too beneath her, but talking about her kinky BDSM relationship online to her underage viewers is absolutely not. I think that it would just be best for Shu to not be a public figure, considering that she can't take the punches she puts out. I don't know how she can portray herself to being this innocent or acting this sensitive when she does what she does for a living. She even goes and scares a mentally ill homeless veteran with PTSD. He thought that she was some girl named Sue who lived in Puerto Rico and had kids among other ridiculous accusations. He thought Sue was going to scam him, and some people said he even thought that this woman Sue was going to kill him. To anyone else in the world, had they seen this man eating out of trash cans living in his van, that would have set off an alarm. Like, hey, something's wrong with this guy, he's probably mentally ill. She just goes on and pretends she's this Sue character and scaring the guy until she was called out for it. She claimed ignorance and once again tried to pull that sneaky, but I didn't at him thing she does. Then she went on damage control pleading for Mr. Toasty to stop tweeting about it. So she can go and mess with people, what she calls dunking on them all day, including the mentally ill, but god forbid if someone goes and says something to the sensitive, innocent Shuwu. The irony of her being so sensitive is that she has an unlisted video called Professional Victims where she talks about a woman dressed in tight clothes being provocative and that if they're provoking men, they shouldn't complain when a man sexually harasses them because they were provoked to. And if the woman does complain, then it's implied by the title that the woman is victimizing herself. So Rebecca Goldstein here decides to throw on her favorite street walker uniform and take a stroll around what looks like downtown Detroit. I know the way I dress is kind of provocative, but it doesn't mean that I should have to deal with it. Uh, I know the way I dress is provocative, but I do not need to provoke. Maybe she should just take her own advice on the unnecessary victimization, huh? Someone who actually doesn't deserve what they get and is a victim is Shuwu's bunny, Ollie. He was bought from a pet mill by Shu. As most people know, pet mills are unethical and abusive. They don't really care about the animals, and they just have them to make a profit. By buying from a pet mill, Shuwu supported this practice. Not only did she support Bunny suffering the future by taking one, but she also keeps Ollie in a small cage as if he's still at the pet mill. In fact, she's criticized another person for having a cage about the same size as hers. Which is really saying something considering hers is used as a dwarf hamster cage. A very tiny mammal compared to a rabbit. This is what her cage is supposed to look like regardless of letting the rabbit roam. 
Not only does she have her rabbit in quote gay baby jail, but she also doesn't bother to neuter him. Not fixing male rabbits causes stress, aggression, sexual frustration, and spraying piss everywhere. Can you imagine what her room must smell like? You're supposed to fix your rabbit young as possible because the longer you wait, the more risk you take in your pet dying when it does get fixed. It's actually not recommended that you fix your rabbit past the age of six. But I guess she doesn't care or doesn't mind if another rabbit of hers dies while going under while getting fixed. But someone who should actually be fixed is Shrekery. His peen, as Shiwu would call it, seems to get excited a little too much and causes him to get into trouble. Despite Shiwu making her relationship out to be a Disney fairy tale, it turns out that Shrekery might have had a history of cheating. One of his side chicks, Jenny McDermott, made a video with screenshots proving that Shrekery was making moves towards her while he was still married. Now there's proof! And I am going to show you all of the proof that it's Armored Skeptic, who is Gregory Fleur, who dated this woman while he was married, who committed suicide while he tried to date me, while he was trying to date. Laura Means Maloof, one of the girls that I remember that were talking to Greg at the time. So Laura Means Maloof, me, possibly Shoe on Head, because in one of the videos I recently watched from when Shoe and Head and Armored Skeptic first got together, he had just moved, meaning he was still living with his wife and he talks about a camping trip that he went on with Shuan Head. Why was he camping? Well, because he still lived with his wife when he was dating Shuan Head. She backs up her claim with screenshots and Shuwu implies in a response video to her that they did in fact know each other. I should be angry that my current boyfriend used to talk to girls before he knew I existed. Like Jenny, I had a boyfriend. I had one other boyfriend. There was also this Facebook message that apparently his now ex-wife sent when she caught him. He also apparently got catfished like the genius he claims to be by another girl. It's rumored and confirmed by Shuwa herself through this Discord leak that his ex-wife didn't like that he spent a lot of their money on Bing Bing Wahoo toys. It's also said that Shrekery spent all of his money on some doomsday cult as well. I just can't imagine what Shu has in store for her own marriage with Shrekery. But maybe they do deserve each other because if you look at the timeline of when Shu broke up with her previous boyfriend, it was around the end of May 2015. But Shu was already flirting with Shrekery before May 2015. The timelines are suspiciously close together and this overlap can also be during the time period of when Shrekery was still married. Even Shu's ex was saying how unusually fast her getting over the relationship was. When Shuwu and Shrekery were open about their relationship, it was also only a little after Shuwu's breakup. And finally, as for addressing Shuwu's response where she cherry-picked what she wanted to respond to in my first video, I went ahead and made some translations for you guys. If you would like to read it, please pause the video and take a look because I'm going to give a text back to a text response. To end the video, I want to say that I'm not being moral mommy. I'm not trying to say whether saying the n-word is right or wrong, or if quote retweeting someone is bad and bringing negative attention to small channels. The point of me talking about those things and showing it to you guys is to show her hypocrisy. I am interested in the mental gymnastics that the uwu white knights will do for shuwu after this video. So here's a little tribute to shu and the uwus. <laughs> Outside. Outside. Bonus round!